we're back with the queen pin and the wingman oh my gosh we have been yeah yeah i'm talking to you rich you know i'm talking to you like really 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 <laughs> all right so we were looking at a video and i was shocked because you know we're always talking about doing things with style with budgeting and one of the most shocking things to me was to find out that what we call runway fashion is no different quality than what we're getting at Target or Walmart. A little bit close, but I mean, you know. I mean, there is there are some differences, of but course. it's just like, like one of the things that stood out to me and, you know, I'm a handbag person. You guys know mm -hmm. I've always said it. I'm a handbag person was the whole some of your handbags are not handmade. I was like, hey, no, please. So they're made in factories and they're realizing that slap a made in Italy sticker on it and everybody's like, yeah. yeah. So what, what was your take on this? Cause you, you were actually the one that sent it to me. Well, let's kind of give them an idea. The video is basically about, you know, people paying so much money for luxury items, like way over the top. But I grew up in the fashion industry and my grandparents owned the largest garment and tailor shop in Chicago. So, and my aunts and uncles owned some as well. So I knew the price difference between say outfits or fabrics. And we don't want to get it twisted to say that there's not way better fabrics out there than right. others. We right. also know it takes a lot more workmanship to a certain degree right. uh, to create certain products. Let's not get crazy. Right. But what I realized when I was younger, like my father would have my suits tailored even as a young boy. So when I went to my communion, uh, I would have a suit made for me. If I went to my eighth grade graduation, we'd have suits made for me. My uncle was even having football jerseys made for me when I was a young boy, Walter Payton, before they even existed. And oh my gosh. I started to, yeah, so I started to learn about the fabrics, but I used to ask my dad then as I became an adult, I'm like, you know, the mall, they're selling these suits for like, you know, $400. Now this is back in the eighties when that would be now a couple grand, like a high-end fashion, you know? And, and I'm like, weren't the fabrics only 20, $30 at the shop, you know? And he's like, yeah, it's a ripoff. The money's usually in the tailoring itself, how much time that takes. But I did start to see where like fabric back then again, say it's $20 and you're charging 400. That's an astronomical difference, right? Let's face it. It's not like a car now, say the average car out there is 30, 40 grand. And then you go get a sports car, like they described in the video for 120 grand, right? It's three times the amount of price. But a lot of times, say to make a purse or a certain type of shirt or something is $10, $20, uh, you know, or, you know, and then all of a sudden they're charging you $2,000 and there's not that much workmanship. The quality isn't really that much better. It's basically just a luxury brand putting their, you know, their mark on that. So, you know, that's what really the video was about. And I, I don't think, I really think also, and I've been fortunate, I went on a tour and I, I've been on many tours. I went inside Louis Vuitton's tour, their factory, not long ago, actually. And I loved it. I felt like I was back with my grandparents with their shop and everything. And okay. they put a lot of work, an incredible brand and their leathers and their workmanship and seeing all of them do each piece specifically, each handle, they kind of describe where that comes from, right, right, where right. their leathers come from you know, just the whole thing and how many different bags I got to see them making amongst suitcases, everything. And don't get me wrong. That is a lot of hard work and that is a luxury brand, but there's also a lot of people don't understand that there are that same type of, I'm not saying same type of quality, but a lot of people working just that hard to make brands that are a lot less money that are really just as good. Right. But it comes right. Down to social status. Right. And I think one of the things, because actually, believe it or not, um, that was one of the things that I started doing. And I will say, I have to thank quarantine for that is paying attention to fit to companies that I wouldn't have normally paid attention to. Um, one of the companies, cause again, I love bags is tote and carry. Hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't have paid attention to them, but they make amazing leather sets that go together that you're not thinking hey, is this, um, you know, 
no, we don't have the LV or we don't have the DB or Gucci mm-hmm. or Chanel, but they're quality, quality bags. And they come in a myriad of colors, styles, and everything. And th- it's, it's, it's a gentleman that owns the company, but you can tell he loves what he does and he puts his heart and soul into this. Mm-hmm. And there are companies out there like this. Yeah. It, you know what? It all really does come down to back to social status, though. Let's face it. And I just went through this with my friend who was dating somebody who got one of the new Louis bags. We're talking about Louis that she spent almost 10 grand on. Now, literally she could barely pay her mortgage. I'm not exaggerating. She's having financial difficulty, but she'll go put a certain amount of money down, charge the rest because she wants that status around really other people to say, not only do I have Louis, I have a bag that you don't have. Also, it's not a knockoff. And it's also maybe something you can't afford. It's almost kind of like, but you know, it's, it's almost a statement. A lot of times, I think a lot of people buy brands to show them off, not to always be mean about it, but you want to kind of up everybody. And I think women go through that a lot. Like I have this, you don't, you're going to respect me because of the bag I have or the clothes I'm wearing or the jewelry I'm wearing, right? It's a status thing. It also makes them feel good, but we've discussed this. If you're buying things and you're financially in debt or you're destroying your income or your life at the same time, which a lot of people don't want to admit that. It could be as much as Starbucks is a status symbol. A lot of times, a lot of people can't afford Starbucks every day. They still will go right. get Starbucks every day because they right. want to make sure they're walking around with Starbucks, not Dunkin' Donuts. I'm just using for an example. Right, right. Right? So I think this is what people have to address, though. But what me and you teach a lot of times is you can live an extraordinary life affordably. You just have to find these items, not knockoffs, unless you want. You want to go the bootleg route, you could go it all day. Let's face it. They're everywhere in the malls. Everywhere. Yeah, and let me tell you something. You know, that little street that begins with a D, we're not going to talk about that street here in New York where you can find about just about knock off everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, you know, that's in, you know, California, you know what I mean? The fashion district there, you got New York, you got Chicago, not, I mean, even in Florida, you got regular malls now selling bootleg and knockoffs all over the place. But here's the deal again. I just want people to make sure they don't destroy their life. And I get you want to buy items that maybe you never could afford in the past previously, because let's face it, a lot of us grew up with not a lot and we want more. And if we are working our asses off and say you want a certain purse or you want a certain wallet or you want a certain pair of boots, I don't care if it's women or men, you know, if you like those type of items or those possessions, you know, you want them. But I was just on Worth Street down by Boca Raton. And okay. we went to eat over there, and it's gorgeous. I mean, it's one of the most. It's basically the Beverly Hills Rodeo of the South. Okay. And I was going through all the windows, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm looking at all the men's more and the women's, but I was looking at the men's, and I'm like, oh my god, I already had that coat. I've had that coat. I've had this shoe, and I've had this, and I've had that pocket scarf, and I've had that sport. I mean, I, I just went down shoes, and within those brands, a lot of them too. And I looked at that, and I'm looking at the pricing, and I'm like, wow. You know, I used to spend all this extra money kind of shopping in those type of stores when as time went on, I was able to go resale and consignment and do all these things instead, instead of spending all this money in L.A. and Vegas. Right, and York, right, right. right. And you, you got to look at it in the, the grand scheme of things like you don't realize, too, in a matter of not just a one year, but 10 years, if you're buying a lot of these items, they go into hundreds of thousands of dollars. You go in a lot of women's closets. There's not just. 10 grand, right? Or 20 grand in shoes with a lot of women or purses between purses and shoes and maybe jewelry. You're at a hundred grand just sitting there. Right. Right. And that's one of the things is that I think the, the, um, spending and a lot of times I will see women. And one of the things here, and I know it's different in other places, but one of the things here is people ride the train a lot. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend that she's literally on her hands wearing $10,000 worth of jewelry Mm -hmm. on the train. That's not including, you know, clothing. Yes. Shoes. So, but, you know, again, we're talking, you know, well, can you kind of like spot me for lunch? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Yeah. And, and get, yeah, it, it's, it's like, wait a minute, where are your, you know, priorities? Where is all of this? And mm-hmm. people are like, no, you know, I have to look the part. Yeah, but it looks worse to me. I would rather go comfortably to lunch, mm-hmm. show up, you know, nice linen outfit, looking comfortable, not worried about it, you know, regular Pandora bracelet, nothing crazy, you know, costume jewelry, show up and be able to afford my lunch and say, hey, uh, can you spot me? I'll uh, cash app it, Venmo you, PayPal you back, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of, it gets to a point where it's tacky. And it's just like, you have to pay attention what are you doing? Where are we going? Mm-hmm. What, what is your, you knew you were going to lunch with the girls. You show up and, and I'm sorry, everybody should show up the way they feel comfortable, but you show up amazing and you're giving this impression. And then at the last minute, it's like, I eh, can't do it. Yeah. Well, they can only order one drink. Right. right. They got to drink water or they only could go at happy hour. Right. Because they right. can't afford yeah, or they can't afford a cover charge, or they're kind of manipulating everything. But then all of a sudden, they see something for four hundred, five hundred, two thousand dollars, and it's funny how they come up with the money real quick, even if they have to put it on a credit card, find it somewhere. It's very interesting when it comes to possessions and how people look at things. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that you and I talked about before was the person that goes on vacation knowing that their lights are going to get shut off. Yeah, 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 and, and it's like. Where are your priorities? Yes, you can look right. You can make the trips. You can do that, but make sure the priorities are there. Live within your means. And I think that's really one of the cool things is I was so jealous and this was right before quarantine. I had a friend who literally (laughs) went to Vegas for $35 round trip. Mm, Wow. Yeah. Somebody, he caught some sort of deal and it was $34.99 for him to come back, but it was a penny for him to go. Mm. And he was like, it's too much of a deal for me to pass up. So I have to find out what the heck I'm going to do when I get out there. Yeah. But he was saying, you know what? I've never, I've never been to Vegas. This is something I'd like to do. He had everything in check. Was I supposed to say, oh, well, pass it up. You really never went there. No, enjoy yourself. Yeah. You'll find things like this. And I think that's the thing that gets me is if you're looking, you will find it. You know, my parents Hmm. used to have this saying like, don't look for something. Don't, don't ask for something or look for something because you're going to find it. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's the same thing, ladies with the, uh, going through your man's cell phone. Oh, I'm looking for pictures. I want to find out. Because guess what? If you're looking for it, you're going to find proof. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a thing. Like, in other words, and that, and that's my thing is look for something within your means, look for something that you can afford. Okay. You don't necessarily have to do the staycation. You don't Mm -hmm. have to, but maybe you can vacation closer. Maybe you can find that deal. It may take a little bit more time, but make sure the priorities are in order. And the same thing with clothes. In other words, fine. You and I were talking the last time we talk, spoke about sample sales. Mm-hmm. Find sample sales, find samples, find all these things that you can do. So, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I think when me and you talk to, when we say find deals, right? It's within your means, but let's face it. Uh, my grandmother used to say, you know, what is it? A deal isn't a deal unless you need it, right? Because let's face it, me and you can walk them all, or we can walk, we could go on airlines, right? Or we could look at a lot of things and be like, oh my God, I could fly there at this point that cheap, or I could buy that. It's right. 70% off, but you can't even afford the other 30% of it. I'm just saying. So people a lot of times are looking for deals, which is great, but they can't even afford the deal, if that makes sense. Because we can financially destroy ourselves saying, my God, there's a Rolex that's five grand and there's 50% off right now. I got to get it for $2,500. But again, you can't afford your car payment or you can't, you know, you don't have money for any other things, but now you got a Rolex on your watch. Now you have this statement piece, but now again, 
You can't go to the dentist. I'm just saying, or you don't have health insurance. So the priorities are really whack, but. Right. Um, right. And, and I also I think, think too. Oh, that, go ahead. That, okay. Well, one of the things is learning and, and, and I had to unlearn this. It sounds crazy, but I had to unlearn this. I had to unlearn the bad spending habits. Yeah. Because it wasn't, I wasn't brought up and, and, I, and I, I'm being a hundred percent transparent guys. I wasn't brought up with the best spending habits. Um, you know, so for us, it wasn't, and, and, and don't get me wrong. It wasn't a matter of like simply, okay, not having, we didn't know where food was going to come from. Right. What I mean by is my mom, like I said, we called her the computer fairy, hmm. but my mom was of the mindset. She could not pass a computer store. Like literally like, you know how women shop for purses, makeup, shoes, et cetera, clothes. Yeah. My mother was the computer person. Yeah. The people in Comp USA, this is how far it goes back, knew her name. Wow. They would call her when things came in. Mm. So she yeah. didn't have get, show us the best spending habits. So I had to learn how to navigate that. And, and that's really what it is, is sometimes we get trapped into that and we fall into default of what we were shown whether it's coming from a lot of money, a little money or somewhere in between, we, we fall back to what we've shown and we have to kind of, you know, relearn. Yeah, well, you gotta understand too, your mother wasn't necessarily maybe programmed on how to manage her money either. And then you have all these children. I know we're dating ourselves, but if you go back, one thing she may have enjoyed is obviously computers. But then- you know, for her to teach you then a lot of times, maybe she was teaching you in ways how to save money in other avenues, maybe, right? Maybe it wasn't how to, how to invest in stocks or how to invest in real estate or all these other things because she was never taught. Right. I think though, on the flip side, I think a lot of our parents are baby boomers, I guess you could say. Right. They kind of came up with this 50s and 60s and all these different, in the 70s, all these different changes in fashion. And then the 80s came with money. And so they were a part of all that. So it, it was some amazing decades as far as even fashion goes. You go back then, it's like, holy cow. But it, I do think it was way more affordable to a certain degree fashion back then compared to now where it's astronomical. I'm just right, saying. Right, right. So, you know, and they would, would never expect people, I'll bet if you went back to the 70s and 80s, I'm sure there were purses and there was, you know, there were suits and a lot of things that were expensive, but not like now where you're talking mm -hmm, the average mm -hmm, certain mm -hmm. type of purses, yeah. five to 10 grand, certain type of high fashion yeah. shirts. $500 suits are five grand. That's insane. So, you know, I was going to tell you too, you know, what's interesting too. I think me and you've seen this is I've got a lot of people that, that I help that are either, let's say they're way overweight, right? And they've saved a lot of money and they went the other route where they never really cared about fashion or the way they looked or hygiene or anything. So they feel good. Actually, they just don't look good and they don't feel that they look good. And then you have other people that look great, like really stylized, know how to dress, spend all this money, but internally they feel real bad because <laughs> they're in debt or that, you know, like, so it's kind of, you know, you got to get a middle ground there. There's got to be a the middle balance, you, the balance. Yeah. There's got to be a balance, no matter if you've not taken care of yourself, you know, uh, health and wellness, say for instance, or um, you went over the top with health and wellness. Cause I talk to a lot about guys that are so obsessed with themselves and women it destroys them. It's not right. helping them. You know, I get, we love to look great in shape. We love to wear all these clothes. We love to have this image. And at the same time, we're just financially destroying ourselves. And you hear a lot of people having strokes or not being able to sleep or sickness of all these different types of sorts. Right. So there's gotta be that balance. You gotta balance it out a little bit. And I think that's really where it is, is finding that balance. And one of the things I guess we can kind of challenge you guys to this week is, finding the balance. What, what is it that you feel you are really great at is whether it be your looks, whether it be your health, whether it be, you know, find something you feel really great at, but on the opposite, find something that you're 
not so great at. Something that you say, you know what, this really could be better. And really try to figure out that middle ground. And guess what? Let us know how you do on it. Because let me tell you something, Rome wasn't built in a day and you're going to fall. And I know Rich can say, because I can say too, you're going to fall a lot of times. I, I can't tell you how many times you're going to fall, but you are going to fall and figure it out. But the point is getting back up and saying, let's try this again. Yeah. So, yeah. So at this point, guys, we're going to round this up and you've heard it here from Queenpin and the Wingman. So bye-bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>